Why do honey bees die when they sting? When the honey bee stings, it dies a gruesome death. The bee's stinger is structured in such a way that once it punctures human skin, the bee can't yank it out without self-amputating. As the honey bee tries to pull out the stringer, it ruptures its lower abdomen, leaving the stringer embedded, pulling out instead a string of digestive materials, muscles, glands and the venom sac. What a result is a gaping hole at the end of the abdomen. It's kind of like bleeding to death, but keep in mind Insects have an bloods. The honey bee stringer is hollow and pointed, like hypodermic needle. It contains two row of lancets or row toothed head plates. These plates are barbed in shape and face outward like a harpoon. As bees stings, the blades alternate, scissoring together into your flesh. Like screw anchor meaning that once in, the stringer can't retract. Muscles connect to the stringer to a venom sac, from which a cell destroying toxins is pumped into the hole. The scent of the venom release from the honeybee signals a threat to the hive, and the widely it smells like bananas. But let's back up. It's only the female honeybees, also known as the worker bees, that sting. Each hive contains some 60,000 worker bees, followed by the few hundred males drawn and the single female queen bee. Worker bees are like disposable soldiers for the colony. Their sole function is to gather nectar, pollinate and defend the base. They are all infertile females. The queen lays all eggs and the drones fertile them. The queen bee only sting when the fighting for dominance against another queen. And while the hornet and the wasp are known for being more aggressive, honeybees are more docile and typically only attack when they threaten. A wasp or bumblebees can't sting against and again. But the honeybee only gets your wants and It'll get you good. Why do dogs steal their heads? New study offers clues. Dogs have a seemingly endless list of endearing traits and behaviors, and their curious head tilt at the sound of human voice is no exception. Despite our close relationship with canines, little research has been done into their head cocking behavior. While conducting a study on dogs, ability to learn words, scientists stumbled upon a potential link between dogs' memory and their head tilt according to a new paper published in Animal Cognition. We investigated the frequency and the direction of this behavior in response to a specific human verbal vocalization, says study author Andrea Somsey 
and the animal science researcher at the Itawas Lorath University in Budapest. We did so after realizing that it often happened when the dogs were listening to their owners. In the study, the Hungarian researchers look at the head tilt pattern of both gifted and the typical dogs. Owners ask their pups to fetch a specific toy from another room after being prompted with the toy's name, a command like bring Rob, for example. While most dogs struggle to memorize the name of just two toys, the seven gifted dogs are of which were border collides could remember at least 10 different toy names they had been taught by researchers. The team found that dogs that were particularly good at toy recall tilt their heads when hearing command more often than dogs who weren't as skilled. When they compared the pooch response to a command from their owner, gifted dogs cocked their heads 43% of the time, while typical dogs did so just 2% of the time. It's possible. Scientists concluded that pups enduring head tilt may be a sign of paying attention or even matching a name to a visual image in their head. Researchers also discovered that dogs usually cock their head in the same direction, regardless of where the owner was standing. The so-called right tillers and the left tillers may be a matter of individual preference. Something scientists say they want to investigate further. Earlier studies have found the right side of dog's brain to be more active in the processing positive words and the praise, which could play a role in the tilt direction. Why is pizza so popular in the US? An easy group dinner or a tasty midnight snack, pizza is a staple in the US. Americans love pizza so much that they'll eat 100 acres of pizza a day. If you don't measure your pizza consumption in acres, that's about 350 slices of pizza per second. Did you ever wonder how this Italian flatbread become an American sensation? Well, like most Americans, it immigrated. Pizza became as popular as it did in part because of the sheer number of Italian immigrants. They made up 4 million of 20 million immigrants who came to the US between 1880 and the 1920. With them, they brought their tasty buds and the pizza making skills. In the post World War II era, Italian Americans migrated west and embraced Subodia, introducing the goy cheese and the scrumptious sauce to the wider nation. Italian immigrants first made visa in their homes and would sell them in unlicensed Venus before G. Lombardis became the first licensed Fisarian in 1905 in New York.
With these American Visarias came the invention of the visa slice. While visa had already been a working class food back in Naples. The slices revolutionized visa in the United States, making it even more accessible for buy workers who could now buy a single serving that they could eat on the go rather than having to buy an entire pie. Shortly after its introduction state sites, Visa became more popular in the US than it was in Italy. This is partly because Visa is not exactly Italian to begin with. Naples was originally founded by Greek settlers around 600 BCE and Visa is known to have excited there before the city was unified with the rest of Italy in the 1961. The cheesy tomato delight wasn't introduced into greater Italian cuisine until the 1940s. So at least for a while, Visa was much more American than the Italian. Why do Indians eat with their hands? Five fingers, five elements. The practice of eating with one's hands, especially your fingers, originated within Ayurvedic teachings, where it is believed that our bodies are in sync with the five elements, the nature and each finger is an extension of one of these five elements. The thumb is an extension of space, the forefinger is an extension of air. The middle finger is an extension of fire. The ring finger is an extension of water. The little finger is an extension of earth. When you are using your hands, you are supposed to utilize all fingers together. This brings together all of nature's elements and brings awareness to the texture, taste, aromas and temperature of the food. When you touch your foot with your hands, you are creating a physical and spiritual connection with it, being more present in the moment. Eating with your hands is also very hygienic contrary to popular belief. We practice washing our hands before and after every meal and wash them more often than we wash silverware. Furthermore, the bacteria that lives in your hands and fingers is known to improve digestion. Indian recipes such as chapatis 
dosas and the paratas are torn to wrap around a side dish such as chutney or rasia Indian rice dishes are usually hand mixed with the side of curry and eaten in delicious sizable chunks additionally for me eating with my hands takes me back home and keep them culture alive in a small way When we share a meal with loved ones, we create a beautiful environment of love, peace, togetherness and mindfulness. We feel one with nature and with each other.